everyone and welcome back to another video. Today will be a start of a new series where I will be teaching you some serverless framework and uh, some AWS thingies. So I've been working with the serverless framework for the past couple of months and had to learn some of the AWS services alongside with it and I've been uh, kind of liking it. I can see the use in it and I wanted to make this series to supplement my learning and also give back to show someone that is new to this maybe some shortcuts or some useful tips and tricks. So I would suggest going through the website yourself as well but I'm just going to cover some of the intro pages. First off we have the introduction which gives the philosophy of why the serverless framework came to be, like why, why does it help and solve and then some of the companies that use it which are big names. Some of the key highlights that I want to point out is the code and infrastructure all streamlined into one project in a very organized way. It's easy to use, it's language agnostic so you have all your favorite languages to choose from and this is the best one for me is the full life cycle of building deploying monitoring updating troubleshooting your web applications that is very powerful and then the scalability you get along with aws and the cloud we have a good plugin system and a vibrant community which is also always important with these types of things next are some of the core concepts i will be covering this visually in like just off the, I quickly cover some of the words or the terminology, which are functions and events. This like idea of a function being some code that does something and the event is whatever causes this logic or function to run. This is like the management or the, like the, the main bare bone concept that serverless framework helps us do is we have functions, which are AWS Lambda functions and things like saving a user to the database, processing a file, or uh, performing some scheduled tasks. What are some of the top events that could trigger these functions? Well, that could be an API gateway, like a REST API, your slash products with a query string, and then you have your like controller, or your, in this case, function that runs and connects to the database and fetches products. We have uh, S3 lifecycle event. So this is even something more complicated than uh, if you had your own setup, right? So you have this almost webhooks with serverless fun um, with S3 that can now trigger a Lambda function and optimize the size of the image or move files from one place to another or resize them or uh, transcribe stuff and stuff like that. So this can become very useful and complicated and just a great way to manage it all through the serverless framework. So those are types of events. Resources are stuff like your databases, your rabbit MQs, or your SNS or SQS, or a bunch of AWS services that sound like a bunch of weird names, but are actually stuff. You can set up all of that through the serverless framework. And this important concept, I want that word for you to go and Google if I don't explain it well enough or just remember this part is CloudFormation which is AWS YAML syntax or JSON syntax of describing or setting up services for example these mentioned above here like different resources so you can use CloudFormation natively within the serverless framework and the serverless framework is kind of built on top of the cloud formation because it, it abstracts away a bunch of stuff that kind of starts seeming repetitive and annoying with cloud formation. It, it, it helps make that less redundant and a lot more maintainable. Okay, and then the idea of services are like the definition of serverless.yaml functions, which you then deploy using the serverless deploy. Yeah, this is just a way of grouping files in a serverless project. Then we have plugins here at the bottom. One of the ones we'll use is the serverless offline, which helps you run AWS Lambda and a API Gateway stuff locally instead of having to deploy it. 
So let's dive into the visual part of this core concepts and then we'll start looking at the project idea. Thank you.